Well hello for our vicarage on a much cooler day than last week. The rain is falling gently outside and everything looks fresher and more beautiful and Millie is much happier. Travelling around the countryside one day early this week I saw many signs of the end of summer. Lots of bales of hay in the fields ready for cattle. Lots of lovely blackberries and elderberries and apples ripening. And we are just about to enter my favourite season of autumn, a season of harvest and hopefully the end of the extreme heat which will be replaced with cooler nights and wonderful colours all around us. One of our lovely congregation brought us some wonderful fresh fruit and veg to give to our more venerable fa vulnerable families this week. I don't think I've ever seen such huge tomatoes. Obviously a good year for growing. Living here in Facet, I feel quite in touch with the countryside. Lorries full of onions, sugar beet and potatoes often come past, as do horses. We're only a short walk from the fens. There's amazing bird life and huge skies, which are particularly lovely on a misty sunrise morning and for amazing sunsets. Earlier this year, had coronavirus not been with us, we'd have undertaken a walk around our parish boundaries for Rogation Sunday in the spring. Traditionally, the local priests and church members would walk around the parish boundary and pray for protection and also pray a blessing over the crops that were sown. When we lived in rural Norfolk, this was a well-attended ritual with a good group of us walking our dogs around the fields praying as we went. However, when we lived in Great Yarmouth, in the past a huge fishing port, the church and community came together in our big Minster church to bless the fishing nets instead. Life at sea, fishing, like farming, is hard work as well as dangerous. Prayers, protection and blessing were always appreciated. And I have to say, the wonderful herring suppers after the blessings were amazing too. Every type of cured and fresh herring was there in all big serving dishes. The smell lasted a rather long time too. Great Yarmouth, you can still buy fresh herrings really cheaply. Last time I bought six for a pound. I wonder if the fact that most of our food now comes wrapped from a supermarket has detached us all a little from the amazing pro process of growing fresh produce. I know some children now have never seen fresh vegetables growing in fields, which is a shame. But I think during this pandemic there's been a fresh interest in growing your own, with more people growing veg in the gardens and on allotments. Do you ever stop to think just how well we're provided for by this lovely planet of ours? The population of our Earth keeps increasing, but there is still plenty of food. And if the richer nations shared more, there wouldn't be any hungry people. One lesson to be learned for all of us now is that we need to be kinder to the planet we live on. Over this past year alone, we have seen terrible fires in Australia, glaciers melting, and we've seen global temperatures rising. Here in England, we've had extreme heat in the day and night. We're warned of more extreme weather events to come. This current pandemic, along with past outbreaks, has probably been caused by human mistreatment of animals for the sake of financial gain. It's always easy to think we can't make a difference in the way our beautiful earth is cared for, but I think that actually we can all make much bigger difference than we think. On the 1st of September, we'll enter creation time. A time in the church calendar to remember how blessed we are with creation and to celebrate it. A time to be thankful, despite all the difficulties this year, for all God's provision. I hope we can all play our part in making this world a place that is kinder, not only to the people around us, but also to the animals and the planet we live on, so that there will be a future for the generations to come. And as the Great Harvest Hymn says, All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above, so thank the Lord for all his love. Amen.